As the Senate prepares for Ken Paxton's impeachment trial, new questions about impartiality. If money has changed hands between you and somebody who's involved in the impeachment process, it would be a good idea uh, to recuse yourself from the process. How political donations tied to Paxton have some people raising concerns. A Texas congressman pushes to block funds from the government department in control of border policy. The question is whether or not we're going to fund a government that's going to actually do its dang job. He's calling on the Biden administration to make major changes. Why his demands are leading to a budget battle. A bright orange barrier in the Rio Grande, now the focus of a legal fight. We look closer at the court challenge and why the judge's decision is not likely to be the last word in this case. Donald Trump fingerprinted and booked. How Texas politicians are weighing in on the accusations against the former president. Produced from the Capitol in Austin and airing statewide, this is the award-winning State of Texas. Hi there, and thanks for joining us. I'm Monica Madden. I'm Ryan Chandler. The impeachment trial for suspended Attorney General Ken Paxton starts in just over a week. Right now at the Capitol, the Senate chamber is closed to the public as they transform the chamber into a courtroom. The usual legislative layout reconfigured for trial, including a witness stand and desks for the lawyers prosecuting and defending Ken Paxton. Proceedings are scheduled to begin on September 5th, and we're getting some new indications of who could be called to testify. That's right. This week, the Dallas Morning News obtained confidential lists of witnesses, and topping the list, Paxton himself. House managers plan to call him to testify, as well as the woman he allegedly had an affair with. Paxton's lawyers previously said that he will not testify. Also on the list, Nate Paul. He's the real estate investor at the center of many of these impeachment allegations. On the other side, Team Paxton reportedly plans to call two senators. One is Paxton's wife, State Senator Angela Paxton, and the other is Brian Hughes. The Mineola Republican was mentioned in the House Articles of Impeachment for his role in a case involving Nate Paul. In another development last weekend, a judge turned down an offer from Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick to help preside over the trial. Former Republican appellate judge Mark Brown said that he donated $250 last year to Ava Guzman, one of Paxton's opponents in the Republican primary. He worried that the donation could raise some concerns about his impartiality, but among the state senators who will vote on Paxton's fate, a lot more money has changed hands, and they have not applied the same standard. Campaign finance records show Ken Paxton's jury wasn't impartial in his last election. In the 2022 Republican primary for attorney general, Galveston area state senator Mays Middleton donated $300,000 to Louis Gohmert, the Texas congressman who tried to unseat Ken Paxton. There is no basis for replacing someone on the ballot who wins the primary and then is even indicted or convicted. Across parties, San Antonio Senator Jose Menendez donated $1,000 to Rochelle Garza, Paxton's Democratic opponent last November. And Midland Senator Kevin Sparks donated $2,500 to Paxton himself. If money has changed hands between you and somebody who's involved in the impeachment process, it would be a good idea uh, to recuse yourself from the process if you really did want to remove even the appearance of any kind of bias. In June, the Senate's presiding officer, Dan Patrick, accepted $3 million from Defend Texas Liberty, a group that's campaigning against Paxton's impeachment. The money trail has some watchdog groups calling for stricter standards. Everything that's happening right now, although it doesn't look good, it's legal. What we need long term is a legislature that says, you know, enough is enough. We need to keep the money away from these important decisions. Patrick has maintained since the beginning the trial, while not a traditional judge and jury, will impartially weigh the evidence. The citizens of Texas can count on the Senate of Texas to have a fair and just trial. We reached out to Lieutenant Governor Patrick as well as all of those senators whose donations we found. Senator Menendez told us that he won't be commenting on impeachment matters. None of the others responded. The story grabbing the most headlines this week is Donald Trump getting booked out of Georgia jail. The former president faces charges that he conspired to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election in Georgia. Lawmakers and political candidates across the country are taking sides, voicing either opposition or support for Trump. And Texas politicians are weighing in with their own opinions as well. If former President Trump is convicted in a court of law 
Would you still support him as your party's choice? Republicans looking to beat Donald Trump, grappling with how to talk about the federal indictments the former president faces. To stop normalizing this conduct. And, and, and I know, look, I know. Between bad behavior, behavior and illegal behavior, way, Chris, and you as a prosecutor way, should know yeah, better. Yeah. Some Texas Republicans knocking Trump for not appearing on stage despite qualifying. Uh, this country is starving for leadership to carry us forward and not look backwards. You know what I think leadership is? Actually showing up to the debate. Another missing candidate from the stage, former Texas Congressman Will Hurd, who did not qualify but had strong criticism of Trump in an interview last week with Nexstar. He wouldn't be facing any of these things if he would have just done the right thing and, and not tried to break the law. He lost the election in 2020, and he tried to overturn the will of the people. And this is just more baggage uh, for Donald Trump that's going to cause him to lose if he's our nominee. Leaders like Governor Greg Abbott not going as far. We, we just want a Republican president. I know that the country cannot suffer four more years under Joe Biden. Senator Ted Cruz has been the most outspoken of Texas congressional delegates on the indictments, dismissing them as hypocritical. Every time something bad comes out about the Bidens, they indict Trump again. This is so obviously a double standard. This is a double standard driven by a Department of Justice. Democrats and critics of the former president haven't been as outspoken on the indictments, with congressional leaders deferring to the judicial branch for the process to play out, but reiterating that no one is above the law. I caught up with Dallas Congressman Colin Allred this week, who is also one of Senator Ted Cruz's Democratic challengers for the Senate in 2024. Here's what he had to say about Trump's latest indictment. Multiple prosecutors and multiple grand juries have reached the same conclusion. Uh, that in the events around the last election, Donald Trump broke the law. He'll have a chance now in front of a jury of his peers to make his case, and that's how our system works. Uh, but I was there on January 6th. I was about 50 feet away from Ted Cruz when he objected uh, to the results in Arizona, leading uh, to us splitting up, and then eventually the mob interrupted our proceedings. Uh, I know how close we came to losing our democracy, and I take it very, very seriously. And I think there, have to be, uh, there has to be accountability. For Donald Trump, we may see that over the course of these cases. Texans have not been pulled on the latest indictments the former president faces, but a June Texas Politics Project poll shows Texas voters are just about split on how they feel about the former president in general. 48% polled found him unfavorable, whereas 44% still view him favorably. The battle over border buoys lands in a Texas courtroom. The arguments to remove the barrier and how the state is responding to keep them in place. Go do your job. Our job is to use the power of the purse to force change. A Texas congressman wants to block funds from the government department in control of border policy. Why he believes a budget battle will lead to change.